So, uh, this is a little hard for me, only because I've never been able, or I've never felt like I've been able to openly speak about um, what I've been going through in here. And um, quite recently, I have been doing things very quietly as far as what I want to do for me. You know, and I can only move forward from here. I don't generally feel comfortable doing these blogging things. I'm just awkward and um, I tried a YouTube channel once where I just blogged about whatever was happening and but nothing really deep or serious. It's just a way to pass time, have fun, whatever. Never liked the way that my voice sounded. I never liked the way I looked on camera, despite the fact that I've always wanted to grow up to be an actor. Um, I've just I was never comfortable with it, but I feel like doing something of this nature is um, needed for not only myself to kind of make sure that by talking to you guys, or in my case, this camera that I'm staring at, um, make sure that I'm, you know, in keeping my thoughts in check and all that, but also to inform others on what it is that I am going through and to answer any questions that, you know, Google just doesn't have the answers to. Um, so I, I'm hoping that by doing this I am achieving at least something as far as helping you guys to understand where I'm coming from, what I've gone through, what I'm going through, and where I'm going. One of the questions that I get asked a lot is um, when did you start thinking about wanting to become a guy? and um, for me, one of my earliest memories, as far back as I can think, I specifically remember, you know, as a child, being in the bathtub, you know, and and then looking down at my body, looking at me, and, and uh, not able to understand why I didn't have um, male anatomy. And what's interesting about that part is that, you know, I'd never really grew up around boys. Um, I have a brother ten years older than I am, and you know, he, so I was never really exposed to you know another boy that would be um, my I, age. I never had any of that, and so I don't know where I got the information or knowledge that you know, why boys were different, how boys were different physically. Um, there was just something inside me that was just... You're missing something. You, you're you missing a huge part of yourself. And as a child, I, I couldn't understand why or, or what that was. And, and it, it kind of scared me. I was raised in a wonderful, wonderful family. Uh, I'm the youngest of four siblings, um, a lot older than me. I came nine and a half years after uh, my closest sibling, which would be my brother, and, and I've got three older sisters. And there's quite an age gap between us, but you know that never stopped me from feeling unloved or not wanted. Uh, my parents were wonderful, absolutely wonderful, and my father was a, a very, very strong uh, father figure in my life. Uh, a lot of my childhood he wasn't around a whole lot, um, as he was a firefighter, and spent a lot of time you know, at the station, but I always loved going to go see him, and and playing around on the fire truck and putting on his gear and, and I felt 
real grown up and proud of myself anytime I would put on his boots and and um, he, he became a superhero to me. I was able to go to school and tell everyone, oh, my dad's a firefighter, you know, he, he saves people's lives, he puts fires out. Um, my, my dad was my idol a lot growing up, and so anything he was interested in, I was absolutely interested in, you know. I grew up loving to, you know, camp and fish, and um, I preferred mowing the lawn to when my mom wanted me to help her cook in the kitchen, I, I liked to rake the leaves, and, you know, and, and just and just help dad around the house wherever I could, follow him, be his little shadow, and um, I was comfortable with that for the longest time, and probably up until I hit puberty, when when other factors and friends and things started getting into my head as to why that wasn't okay, why I needed to start acting my gender, or the gender that I was born into. There was just, there was so much love in my family, and that extended to, you know, cousins and aunts and uncles, and, and I, I never felt like I wasn't wanted or loved, but I did feel out of place. I was raised Mormon. My family is very my family's got some deep roots within the Mormon religion and, and um, while I'm not here to talk about religion um, I will say that by growing up within that church that only further kept me from speaking my mind about what it was that I was feeling what I was going through um, these thoughts that I was having, you know, because it was bad. That was Satan talking. That was, you know, I was getting ideas put in my head that shouldn't be there, and and that I wasn't a good kid because I was having these thoughts, and and I wasn't, you know, worthy of everything that, you know, that your teachers and church try to build you up to, and and um, it was, I felt very alone. I never felt unloved, but I did feel alone, and confused, and scared. And as I continued to grow up, that scared insecurity, it turned into action, and I was a terrible, terrible teenager. I never did talk about anything that I was feeling. I didn't know that I could talk about it. I didn't want to get in trouble by my parents. I didn't want to, you know, be looked down upon by the church and and, and everybody that I knew because it, it's just not something that people talk about. You know, that, it's not normal and so if I don't hear anybody telling me that it's okay, don't know anybody else going through the, the thoughts that I'm having, that must mean that there's something wrong with me. But if I say that there's something wrong with me, then there's just going to be questions and, and I don't know those answers because I'm still trying to figure out what it is that's been going on. So just growing up as a kid, um, not knowing how to openly talk about my, my confusion as to why I wasn't born a guy, um, I expressed kind of what I was feeling in the way that, you know, I played with my friends. You know, anytime we'd play house, I was always the, the big brother or the boyfriend or the dad. I specifically remember being Jack Sparrow a lot or Harry Potter, Tarzan, Cocoaum, you know, all these really strong male characters that I always just had this utter fascination for and uh, grew up loving. Anytime that I'd get roped into playing Barbies with some of the friend the girlfriends that I had, um, I was always, you know, Ken, but, but while they were more into, oh, look at you, Ken, you're so cute, I'd be like, yes, but um, 
there's a lion over there. Let's go investigate and play safari. And, like, I'd always try and like detour from like the just whole romanticized Barbie and Ken thing. Like I, I wanted action. I wanted plot. I wanted, you know, and, um, needless to say, my friends didn't play Barbies with me for very long before we had to move on to something else. But I was, I've always, I was definitely more into jumping on the trampoline, swimming in the pool, playing in the mud, um, video games, play, playing football. You know, at school, especially elementary school, uh, I always, at recess, you could find me with the guys. I was, you know, always the athletic tomboy in their eyes that uh, I, I could throw a ball, I could catch a ball, I could kick a ball, um, and on the playground I was just one of the guys and it was an absolutely amazing time in my life because then I didn't have so much as an age group still had that innocence that you know there were no gender roles. I mean yeah some of my other girlfriends they you know, started getting interested in boys and, and getting boyfriends and starting wearing makeup and and all that, but I just wanted to play, get dirty and play and catch bugs and and it wasn't until the summer going into seventh grade that things really changed because I, as, you know, sixth grader, naive little me, I figured by cutting my hair, you know, and, and kind of looking more like a guy that I, I would feel a lot more like one of the guys. So when I came back that um, fall for seventh grade, I had my hair cut short and all the friends that I once had they didn't understand at all. I got made fun of constantly. I you know got called a boy a lot and and while you know I, I pretended to be kind of upset about that it felt kind of good but I, I was rather agitated that I was being called a boy for the wrong reasons and that kind of only just fueled um, continued to, to grow into like this this unsettling thing inside of me that I just didn't know what to do with. I didn't really make things anything I didn't really make things better for myself by um, joining the football team. I was the only girl for both seventh and eighth grade year but it was a really comfortable experience for me. Um, honestly, I was allowed, you know, to go into the the boys' locker room when we had our little meetings, and and um, so during football practice is the time that I got to look forward to the most because I was, again, one of the guys just playing, getting dirty, being able to prove that I could throw but, it school itself was difficult. I had to restart completely um, with who my friends were, you know, and um, they just, they, they didn't understand and I had to keep moving forward with that. So sports became my, my passion, but as soon as football was over I went into basketball and I was once again on the, a, a girls team and while it was fun, I never built any close friendships the way I did with the guys. I never, um, I never felt like I truly fit in. I eventually found a really great group of friends um, towards the end of my eighth grade year. It was this this entire just literal group of people that I don't know why I didn't notice before or or even knew about. They kind of just seemed to appear out of nowhere. And I built so many good close relationships. It was mixed girls and guys and 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 while the school would label them as like the 
the weirdos and the geeks and the freaks and the unpopular kids. I, I belonged with them because they didn't judge. They weren't the ones that were teasing me and, and about, you know, the, the baggy clothes that I wore, the way that my hair was cut, the fact that I liked football or anything like that. They were this group that embraced, you know, why people are different and how they're different. And it was also with the same group that I came across, that I came across my first lesbian friends. There was only uh, one or two that had come to terms with who they were um, in middle school. And it had been something that they had discovered quite some time ago. And and I didn't even really know that that was a thing. I mean, I, I sure, I, I met my first lesbian when I was in like second grade or something. She said, she came up to me and told me she was lesbian. I was just like, okay, I don't know what to do with this information. I don't really even know what that is. So, yay. <laughs> but when I found out that part of my friends, you know, were also lesbian, it didn't change anything about me. It didn't, or it didn't change the way that I felt about them, the way that anything like that. If anything, I became even more protective over them because of how the rest of the school was treating them and making them feel different and, and weird. And, and I, 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 after a while, kind of became like the group's bodyguard. I was this really tall, muscular, athletic, butch girl that a lot of people were just afraid of if they didn't know me and I was I guess I was just enough weird to help uh, keep the hate away from my group but instead that hate went on to me so I just developed a thicker skin for it and I um, began to just ignore it but I still wasn't comfortable with talking about how I was starting to associate myself as more of a male figure than female. High school was hard. Um, lots of different people, opinions, cliques, groups, and of course hormones. It was a very, very confusing time, very um, eye-opening for me when I look back at everything that I had done, everything that I had experienced. Um, I turned a lot of that pent-up confusion and, and anger of not knowing that I could talk to somebody into self-harm. Uh, I started drinking vodka or uh, just any kind of liquor that I could get my hands on. It was really easy to come by in high school, which is really sad in hindsight. Um, I really don't remember a lot of my freshman year. I was wasted during school for a lot of it, and maybe the teachers knew, but they didn't know how to deal with it, so they just ignored it. I, I really don't know. I couldn't have been, like, non-obvious. I was, though I was in acting classes, like, nobody's, no, nobody can act not drunk when they're drunk. I'm a bartender. I know these things. <laughs> But um, I started drinking, smoking pot, having sex, uh, I started cutting, I even ran away a couple times, and all of this when I was 14 or 15 years old, it, I developed a, a heart condition that kept me from being able to play sports, and that was kind of always like my aggressional outlet where I could get all that pent-up energy out of, and, and without sports, I, I kind of turned into this downward spiral of just absolute depression and, and things just kept piling up and I didn't even th I didn't think I was ever going to come out of what this looming cloud over me was um, as of date I have attempted to take my life four different times so I was diagnosed as depressed and began taking medication for it and though it got me out of bed in the morning it didn't protect me from the pressures 
that was high school. So I put on my acting face and I started dressing like the girls at school were. I started talking like they would. I started acting like they would. I was doing anything I could to fit in to kind of feel that sense of community that I had back when I was um, in elementary school. But I, I was never getting it, and it was it was really starting to to get to me. I was basically doing anything I could to act out. Um, like I said, I was a bad, bad, bad teenager. Just when I thought that things couldn't get any worse, um, the group that I had made really good friends with in middle school, you know, a lot of them followed me to high school, with the same thing, or the same school. We took a lot of the same classes, and we're in this uh, same smart group. My high school was weird. They segregated the the normals, and then there was the behind students, and then there was the advanced students. But um, ironically enough, all the freaks and the geeks were in the advanced classes. Um, I could go on a tangent on that all day, but I'm, <laughs> that's not what this is about. But um, so I was able to still have them and, and watch them all individually grow as they uh, came to terms with who they were as well and it was all just a very weird awkward emotional time everyone you know trying to come to terms with who, who they were as people and, and a lot of that group um, found resolve in being able to say that they were like bisexual or something and, and now to me that was like a, a really interesting concept and and while I you know saw my friends you know like they would kiss each other in the hallways or um, there was a lot of just playing around probably a little bit too much just touchy-feely kind of goofing around um, but that w was normal that was how our group was and you know it was it wasn't until I It wasn't until one of my friends' birthdays that I was, um, I, I stayed, ended up staying the night, you know, with the rest of the group, and, and as most of this group now is either bisexual or lesbian, um, I, I had never done anything as far as, like, playing their games or anything, but for some reason that night, oh, I remember the reason I was drunk. Yeah, I had a football game that night. And I um, showed up. I wasn't playing football. I was in the marching band. That's why I was. I wish I was on the field, honestly. But um, I showed up drunk at her party, and they were playing spin the bottle. And so you know, why the hell not? So I got in on it, kissed a lot of girls, and. I honestly couldn't tell you who my first kiss was because I I don't really remember a lot. Um, it was all just it was cute, innocent fun. It was just what you would expect out of 14, 15 year olds. There was nothing like heavy going on or anything like that, at least not to my knowledge. <laughs> if there was, I completely missed it. But um I ended up falling asleep in her closet and I remember waking up and Little Miss Birthday Girl was sleeping and up like using me as a pillow, which wasn't that hard to do. I was like three times her size. Um, but I remember that specific moment where, you know, she was cuddled up to me that these feelings that I had never acted on, never understood, never anything, kind of started to click into place of, this is nice. I like this. You know, I had boyfriends, you know, in the past and, and just for for show, I guess. I mean, I, I care a lot about the guys that I was with, but it was more of a, a friendship really to me than, than actually anything like romantic or, or feelings or anything like that. But hey, everybody else had a boyfriend, so why, why couldn't I? Or, or they had a girlfriend, but I wasn't, I didn't, yeah, <laughs> there wasn't 
whole lot. Um, blah blah blah. Anyway. Um, but when I woke up that morning, I there was a, there was a lot of thoughts and emotions going through me, but it was not necessarily the pent up angry kind that I had been holding on to for forever, but it was kind of like serene. And it took me a couple days before, you know, I wrote my friend that had slept with me in the closet um, that I had enjoyed that moment a lot. And she, being the first, like, real lesbian that I had ever met, um, I asked her questions. I, I started talking to her about it. And she became my first girlfriend. And yes, I do realize that I came out of the closet by coming out of a closet. <laughs> but even after I identified myself to my friends as bisexual, you know, it was it was a very hard thing for me to to be able to openly say, um, and I don't know why that was. My friends, with the most understanding group, <laughs> they're more just like, "Oh, okay, all right, right, she's one of us now, yay! Okay, let's add another one to the list. <laughs> We're converting." You know, just this retarded joke. How, you know, it was our little disease that we were spreading around to everyone. Oh, don't get next to that group. They're gonna turn you gay. You know, um, it was funny then. The way things are now, especially politically, um, how a lot of people actually strongly think that that is why we have a gay community is because it is a disease, it is an illness. I, it's not necessarily something that we can really laugh at anymore because it is a very serious issue, and I personally have had to deal with that um, in not so pleasant ways. But um. My relationship with my girlfriend didn't last long at all, and, and honestly, it was because I got scared, um, and and I reverted back into just being with guys, having sex, doing the drugs again, the drinking, and that, that was kind of like my safe zone, where I would just feel numb, and I wouldn't have to deal with my thoughts. And it wasn't until I was like 16 or or close to 17 when I got arrested that um, it was kind of a little bit of a wake-up call to me of all right you need to slow down you know you, you've you've caused enough problems obviously and um, so living with my sister helped out a lot um, you know I, I love my parents to death but my mom you know very religious very Mormon you know and trying to you know, it was it was just the most heartbreaking thing to constantly disappoint her time after time. Everything that left my mouth seemed to be just this disappointment, and and I quit going to church because I didn't feel right. I wasn't comfortable, um, especially when they started talking about particular subjects about you know, the gay community or, or anything like that. That I, it just made me so angry, and and I, I couldn't be around that, and especially when, you know they're talking about you know this being sin and I'm sitting there going okay I'm, I'm sin I get it I don't belong here I, I, I can't do this so you know I quit and that was really really hard on my mom and, and my dad he he doesn't really know how to deal with confrontation doesn't know how to deal with things that he just he, he, he just doesn't so he'll, he shuts down he shuts you out um, and so I, I lost the the hero father figure, firefighter, um, that I had as a kid. Um, so going to live with my sister for a while really did help out a lot. And um, But it wasn't until it was my senior year and I was in the band that there was, you know, this little freshman, I think it was freshman number two or something like that. I didn't really know her name or anything like that, but uh, her mom came and helped out with the band a lot. And um, I just remember, I didn't really know who this woman was, I, I, she, I, she was just the band mom, whatever. But um, just one day she just came over to me and just wrapped her arms around me in this, this tight, warm hug. And it was a little awkward, but it, it felt nice. Because somebody out there could sense that there was something wrong. And um, 
she and I developed a very, very good relationship. That whole family, you know, they're my adopted family. And um, I stayed with them a lot when I was confused. And I, I never openly talked to them about, you know, me having these struggles or feelings. But, but they were there for me to just laugh and forget and have fun. And they were, they were my family away from my family. And 100%, they saved my life. I was still scared, though. I was scared of getting judged, of getting teased again. Of, I didn't want any of that. Nor did, was I ready to answer questions. I mean, people were going to have questions, but I, I did not have answers. I was still trying to figure it out. Um, so me, by trying to figure out, you know, I, I did get married to a man. And um, that relationship didn't last very long. It, it, him and I, we had a, a really, really great, great friendship, you know. And but romantically, I just I don't think I was invested nearly as much as I made myself believe that I was. Um, of course, there was a lot of other marriage issues and all that, um, but we did quickly get divorced. And it wasn't until that point, you know, we got divorced, moved back in with my parents, but I, I had this new job. And it was the divorce that kind of had me thinking, like, I, I need to, I'm, you know, I'm 23, was I 23? I think I was 23. 23 years old. I need to start being true to who I am. And um, I had... I had this friend also that you know she she be kind of she kind of became my everything. And she was so supportive and so just very there for me all the time, and she helped push me to these to being able to be comfortable and talking about it. And you know, with her, I was able to come out as as bisexual again. You know, to my friends, never to my family. I wasn't planning on coming out to my family at all, really, unless I, I found a girl, and seriously, you know, and to bring her home to mom and dad kind of a thing. So I wasn't gonna, you know, cause drama where it wasn't needed. That's why I got married. I wanted the easy route, but the easy route made me absolutely miserable. But, um, but this, this friend that I had at the time, she... She brought me out of my depression. She made me comfortable talking about, you know, the bisexual thing, and and then my my coworkers at this new job, and and you know, I was able to finally open up and talk to them about being bisexual. Well, then that kind of slowly, you know, slipped into this. Okay, well, actually, um, the bisexual thing's kind of a front. I, I guess I'm lesbian. Um, I I I've can't do relationships with guys and, th and this is why I've always been drawn to females and and um, you know kind of explaining that to them and these guys are <laughs> the coolest because like it was almost it's just like my group back in, in high school they're just oh, okay great we've got a lesbian oh that's awesome let's talk about hate crimes and no we, we <laughs> that's a joke I promise <laughs> but um and then I became a bartender, and then that came with like all of these these regulars that I see every day, and and they're all very aware, you know, that I'm fully gay, and you know, and and um. So I I've been able to live comfortably as a as a lesbian within my friends, not my family, but within my friends I've been able to be true to that and. And, um, and it felt really good, but it wasn't enough. Um, my first girlfriend back in high school, you know, we're, we're still very good friends. And, and um, she had a, a friend that she introduced me to um, who was transgender. And meeting him for the first time, I just asked, you know, a simple question, how did it start for you? And as soon as he started talking, I connected 
immediately. I was emotional. I, I couldn't stop crying. Everything he was saying was right here. It, it's what I was feeling the entire time. It, years and years and years of just confusion and, and anger and resentment and all of a sudden it was like this there was a switch or like this floodgate and I felt finally at peace and I was able to, to turn to you know this this transgender male and, and my you know first girlfriend and and you know very supportive and, and then my you know my friend that um, helped me with the divorce and, and being able to open up you know and, and she was immensely supportive and and I started you know talking about you know hey um, this is what I'm thinking they're like great if you need us we're here we'll talk and so I finally started talking to my doctor and um, one of my regulars also at, at work, you know, her son is transgender male recently. Um, like I was there the day that, that she gave him his first testosterone shot and I, I'm hearing all these, these stories. And I'm, getting I'm getting excited just talking about it now. Um, it's just, this is where I belong. This is, this is how I belong. This is who, who I am. And I'm sorry that I wasn't born this way. I'm, I'm sorry that if this causes uncomfortableness. I'm sorry that this causes resentment towards me. Um, but I'm, I'm just hoping that by doing this video, um, I've made at least some of you kind of understand me a little bit more. Um, there's a lot of things within this video that I have never told anyone really outside of one or two of my friends and it was very hard to do so um, but in order for me to be able to open up to you I've got to really open up to you and and um, like I hope you see like how, how vulnerable this is making me and how much love and support is needed more than ever I know that I'm gonna lose people I already have but I'm tired of living the way people want me to live I, I just wanna live for me my name is Brenton Damon Depew. I hope that you love me and will continue to love me because of what is in my heart rather than the gender that I was born in and the decisions I've made to become a transgender male.